Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome back. It's your host Kev Baker here for another hour of amazing radio right here on the Kev Baker Show on your number one network, truthfrequencyradio.com. And it's number one because of all of you out there. Makes my night every time I log in and I see all of you tuning in night after night. You don't know what that does for me and my co-host, Johnny Whistles. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the past couple of nights because I didn't really appreciate all the bombshells that our five political activist guests had on them. It was utterly mind-blowing. And like I said during those shows, I think people will look back on them as being historic broadcasts. It's not just those shows that will be looked back on in time. I think some of the work we do with tonight's guest, Anthony Patch, as well, they too will be historic in their own way. Tonight as well, we're going to be breaking new ground. It's going to be everywhere. You're going to love tonight. Johnny Whistles, I can't wait to get going, man. You had a bit of a nightmare getting logged into Skype, but let's forget that. And I want you, Johnny, to cast your mind back to 2013, to Bilderberg. Do you remember the first weekend we ever met, John? Oh, yeah, I can remember that, Kev. I came up to see you, got a quick cup of coffee, met you physically. One of my contacts on Facebook, just when I was starting out, and I was going down to attend, well, to visit the Bilderberg meeting in Watford. And that was in June 2013. Now, while we were down there, obviously, there was a famous character, he's famous now, he goes by the name of Edward Snowden. Now, he came out and he broke all of the NSA wiretapping, all that kind of stuff. And I remember being in the field at Bilderberg and we were talking about all the attendees, all the Wookiee people that would be turning up there, these politicians, these CEOs. And there was this first time speaker coming as well. And this first time speaker was called Alex Carp. And he was representing a company at the time I knew nothing about called Palantir. What the heck was going on? Because here was Donald Trump stood with his hands on some kind of magical, mysterious, woo-filled ball, Tony, I was blown away. And at the time, you know, I'm thinking, well, what's going on here? Do I dive down this rabbit hole? But, Tony, you dragged me into this rabbit hole, and I'm glad you did, because this is huge. Aside from the woo, and I mean there is a lot of woo here, that ball that uh, Donald Trump has got his hands famously on now, it is the logo it's the kind of badge for this company, Palantir. And they stole that name, Palantir, from Tolkien and Lord of the Rings because Palantir is the magical sphere that the evil Lord Sauron actually uses. Now, we've all seen the films, and if you haven't, it's a big crystal ball hang. And funnily enough, he uses this to get this. He surveils, he tricks, and he threatens his enemies, Tony across Middle Earth. Here, we're going to give you really, what are these guys thinking philosophically and psychologically, what are they doing? And therefore, it is exposing what we are talking about here regarding Palantir. Now, I'm going to say very quickly, Palantir, why it's important, is signified, as you said, Kev, at the beginning, by their trademark, which is that crystal ball, they were saying in Saudi Arabia that this Palantir program is what is running this anti-terrorism center in Saudi Arabia. But more importantly, this is being carried by the president of the United States to each of the countries that he's being he's visiting, including Germany. He is distributing the fact that we have D-Wave, we have pallet here. We can see all. We can monitor all. And yeah, we've been abusing the power of using the warrants in the FICA court system. But oh well, it's too far along. And we don't care about showing our hand, which they did when they placed their hands on the crystal ball of pallet here. And you know, Tony, this is almost like a weapon that he's traveling about with. It basically is a weapon because... 
much like you would go to these meetings and say, look, I've got a nuclear bomb now. That's basically what he's doing. He's saying, I've got the D-wave, and you described it as being the big dog. And nothing comes close to this, Tony. And I think we should look to the president of China and the way he kind of done a U-turn and stopped dead in his tracks after meeting with Trump over that famous chocolate pudding. I think it was D-wave that was being discussed over the chocolate pudding that night, Tony. I would suspect it was a black pudding. <laughs> a big black cube of pudding. <laughs> But, you know, this Palantir company as well, I found an interesting kind of connection loosely between them and D-Wave. And that's the fact that when they were starting up, Tony, we see a two billion funding for their startup coming from a company called NQTEL. Now, NQTEL are basically like a public face of the alphabet agencies, and they too are tied up with D-Wave. Now, I thought it was very, very interesting how here we have the D-Wave crew, the nuts and bolts, the hardware, and Palantir, basically the software arm of it, both funded by the same alphabet agencies who use both companies. That's correct. And so if you, as the president, are saying, okay, we have the new weapons of warfare. We have the quantum computer. We have the quantum computer producing an absolutely unbreakable form of encrypted communications. And we can read everybody else's RSA-based communications. And we have the software that has already, for years now, been monitoring everything in the world. And that is the software. It's not the only program, but it is the big dog program, if you will, of the sentient world simulation which is monitoring everyone as a node and given an avatar around the world 24-7. That came out of Purdue in 2006. This is part of the software package that operates the sentient world simulation run by D-Wave for the intelligence communities. My point here is the big picture point is this is the indicator that the cyber warfare of World War III is about to begin. That's why he's on this traveling roadshow. He's telling everybody, which we, you know, we, we can call allies if we want, but he's about to land in Brussels after visiting the Vatican. He's going to meet with NATO in Brussels, the same time that former President Obama will be at the temple, the throne of Satan, Palmara, the throne itself, which was moved from Turkey to Berlin, and which he used also in his first election in the Democratic Convention. They had a replica of the throne of Satan. He, Obama, will be meeting with Merkel in Berlin the same day that Trump will be in Brussels meeting with NATO. This is coming together, and this is not fear-mongering. This is dominoes, okay? These are all dominoes falling in lockstep that we see this chain of events coming coming apart. Yeah, go ahead. Better time, Tony, for him to set out on his first foreign adventure with this massive global cyber attack that took place. Everyone's mind on the world of cyber, and now the Donald is going about saying, yeah, you see those cyber attacks? Nothing in comparison to what I can do with my D-Wave. But that's just my speculation, Tony. No, that's not speculation. I'm going to back up a couple of dominoes further. Okay, they call that hack attack WannaCry. Well, that's a very interesting name. But let's look at the two primary software packages that Palantir produces. One is Metropolis. That basically is for business operations, investment, community, stock markets, commodity markets. The other should ring a bell with the audience. It's Gotham. Okay, we've got Metropolis, yeah, Superman, Gotham, Batman. Go beyond that. What was the name of the exercise in New York a couple of weeks ago? Ah, Gotham the, Shield. The famous Gotham Shield, Tony. Okay. This is not just coincidence, and this is not conspiracy theory. 
This is them saying, look, you guys, we're so far along on our agenda, we're not even trying to hide it anymore. In fact, here's the crystal ball of the software program that runs this threat anti-terrorism center, which when you look at it, obviously is pomp and circumstance, obviously is for show, because the NSA, GCHQ, nobody else shows their threat, you know, uh, anti-terrorism center to the public. That was the Dr. Strangelove moment. Recall the round table with all the people sitting around the table in the Dr. Strangelove movie. That's what that is. That is theater. theater. That is Hollywood. That is psychological manipulation of the masses by saying, you know what, guys? We're not hiding anymore. This Gotham and Metropolis, the other program, this Alex Carp obviously fancies himself as a bit of a superhero. He even describes his employees and the work they do as being the stuff of the Justice League, Tony. This guy is so far up himself, and he's so connected to another uber-globalist that we all need to pay attention to, Peter Thiel. Absolutely. Uh, he's a significant player. He comes from um, PayPal, but he is a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley in, in California, and he's invested in a number of company, companies, but he's one of the um, principal co-founders of Palantir. Now, let me give you a little of the philosophy. Um, we're, we've, you and I have gathered a whole bunch of information on this company, but we're just going to give people bits and pieces today. So we apologize if we're kind of jumping around because we're still pulling the picture together here. I mean, this is like the newsroom, okay? But their philosophy, as described, is Hobbesian, H-O-B-B-E-S. That's from Thomas Hobbes, who wrote Leviathan, the 17th century philosopher. And he believed that a strong central authority was the only option for maintaining peace. The other relationship is to Jean Piaget, who was a psychologist who espoused the merits of a hierarchy, free, okay? No stratification, no, no top of the pyramid. Hierarchy free play for children. This is their philosophy. This is one world government. This is the state dominating people. This is them trying to say that the only way, the only option for peace is a strong central authority. This is what they believe in at Palatir. This is why they, this is like saying peace through war. That's what it means. It they believe the only way to achieve, to achieve peace is by killing everybody. Nice and fresh tonight, Johnny. <laughs> but just before the show, I shared with you and Tony a story about how Donald Trump, Ivanka, and Melania had visited the Vatican City today. Something very strange about all of it, though, whistles, wouldn't you think? Well, Kev, these pictures, but I'm just posting the first one in the chat here. I mean, to be at the Vatican um, dressed in black, it is probably, that's quite a creepy thing, do you know what I mean, that we're seeing here, because uh, there, you posted the other one, Kev. Why would you wear black and black veils at the Vatican? That's a very good question, and before I get Tony to answer that, I'm going to describe for the listeners out there who are not over at the chat room, truthfrequencyradio.com forward slash chat. Lots of listeners on iHeart, TalkStream Live, so many places, but Today, when Donald Trump visited the Vatican, Melania and Ivanka chose to wear all black, with black veils as well. Now, Melania, she's covering her hair in this photograph, yet compare that to when she went to Saudi Arabia and there was such a fuss over nothing when she had no headscarf on. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you. The, for those that don't know, there is a white pope that we see in the picture, of course. He's always out in the media. Behind the scenes is the black pope, who is the Jesuit general. He runs the Jesuit arm of the Vatican, of the Catholic Church. Trump himself is a Jesuit. He is following the directives of both popes. 
The white pope is the public image. The black pope works behind the scenes. I believe that the reason they're wearing black is in honor of the black pope because the Jesuit, Je the Jesuit agenda has always been afoot, but that's what's behind this. This is what is pushing us towards September, towards the re-reformation of the Protestant and Catholic churches, of the bringing together, in fact, of more than just the Protestant churches, but all religions under the Pope. The strong arm of the Vatican is the Jesuit arm, and that's why they, I believe they're wearing the black. Now, there could be other reasons that they'll put out in public in a press release and say why, but always you got to look deeper. And just to make a scientific connection, remember I have said all along, excuse me, the leadership, public information, the leadership at CERN are all Jesuits, and the Jesuit black pope runs CERN. So everything at the top of the pyramid, if you want, is the Vatican itself. So what you're seeing is the New World Order mechanism, software, computer system, is pulled together now. The religions are about to be pulled together in September, following in August the eclipse across the United States in the shape of an egg, which is the Ogdote. Okay, those are the deities they worship. This all goes to the worship of Saturn and the sun. This is all about Apollo. If you look in Trump's um, Trump Tower condominium, he has a statue to Apollo in there. So this is all about worship of the sun and worship of the moon. This is totally nefarious and occult. This is not conspiracy theory. This is doing research. There's a vast difference. Is there. What I want to get into here very quickly is to go back to sort of my default discussion, and that's always psychological operations. Those are done for programming the masses. It's done for deep machine learning to teach through algorithms the AI system about people and to predict people's behavior, thus to control. If you can predict, you can control. That's what this is all about. Now, the founder of the founder of this company he holds a phd in social theory okay social theory we're not talking about a guy who has a phd in computer programming or computer science or even computer hardware okay we are talking about a guy who <laughs> at palantir Mr. Carp, that's a fish, by the way. It's a bottom feeder. It eats garbage. That's spelled C-A-R-P, by the way. But Mr. Carp, spelled K-A-R-P, holding a Ph.D. in social theory, goes right back to what we've talked about so much, about how deep machine learning takes place in the world of the sentient world simulation and what D-Wave started with in its benchmarks for its early prototype computers, was building algorithms based upon the observations of the behavior, the processes, the communications conducted by human beings. This guy has a PhD in how we think and behave. So obviously he's going to run a company that builds software based on those algorithms I just described. This is all about psychological manipulation, thus control. Yeah, they uh, proved their worth with the U.S. Army and then moved right into all of the intelligence communities. But just to put a label on it, we'll just call it NSA, because that's what we're going to really reveal on Friday, as I said, those programs. But you're exactly right. Again, going back to the prototypes for D-Wave, built upon those algorithms, but the algorithms were for the purpose of pattern recognition, whether it's for images, you know, graphics, pattern recognition, you know, facial recognition, but it was also data patterns. And this goes back to what we talked about on Friday with the new Boltzmann machine, D-Wave computer, the new generation, the new paradigm at D-Wave is moving away from specific problems called optimization, a very narrow focus 
to what is now called sampling. And that is done for the purpose of not tossing out what could be considered less than perfect answers or decoherence or errors. They're going to keep all the returns, all of the samples, and then do what are called stochastic. You do this in in stock market charting and, and forecasting. Stochastic theory is pattern recognition and predictive analysis. This is what D-Wave cut its teeth on, is with this Boltzmann machine now, they can sample and in the data see the patterns. Everything is data. The new money, the new currency of the world is data. And if you can recognize the patterns, and I won't go down this rabbit hole, but the ge- the geometry, the actual geometric shapes of the data in the samples shows you the patterns and shows you the predict prediction of the future and it shows you how to control events thus control people a lot of talk about microchipping the population now i know we've covered this before maybe michael hasn't heard it but he's asking do you think that microchipping is around the corner It won't be in the form of a microchip. It will be nanoparticles that are within every person at this point because we've ingested it and inhaled it, taken it in from the environment. These are dormant nanoparticles that will be triggered by the 5G Wi-Fi system. And at that point, that is the mark of the beast. It will manifest on the body, on the hand and on the forehead. But that will be a result of the triggering of those changes to your DNA. This is a DNA modification that will include modification of the mind itself to produce a surf class of drones. Now, I want to mention something just tangential to that. The article came out today. I'll send it to you, Kev. 5G can penetrate the walls just like an X-ray machine and can produce a 3D image of you inside your building through 5G Wi-Fi. Okay, we've kind of known about that, but there's an actual mainstream media article that came out today saying they can look through the walls with 5G. And we talked a lot about 5G, but that's just a tangent to that, and I wanted to toss it in there. And just very quickly about 5G, it has a very short range, which means there have to be antennas everywhere. That's why they're talking about Internet of Everything, your refrigerator, your toaster, everything being connected to the Internet. What they're talking about is placing antennas in your home in the form of your appliances and whatever else, including the smart meter that obviously we've known about for a long time. But it's a short range, but it has a tough time penetrating the walls. So this article saying they can use 5G to penetrate the walls is a demonstration of Let's call it the wattage. This is the power that they are transmitting from a very close by receiving and transmitting site to that wall to be able to penetrate it. So we will explain how D-Way's new generation of computer does that sampling, does that pattern recognition from a software perspective. And I'll give you the quantum physics, and I'm going to tell you this real quick. we got two minutes. D-Wave's a quantum computer. So is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. I've never said that to you before on the air. CERN is a quantum computer, the main ring, the physics, the nuts and bolts of it, I'll show you on Friday, and the planets in the solar system are also a quantum computer, and I will show you Friday From the physics standpoint, how all of those statements are absolutely valid. We now have massive quantum computing in 